Example 17.7. In this example, we have an spherical tank of 3 meters in diameter with a thickness of 2 centimeters made out of a stainless steel and is used to store ice water at a temperature of 0 Celsius. The tank is located in a room whose temperature is 22 Celsius as well as the wall. The outer surface of the tank is black and the heat transfer coefficient between the outer surface and the tank and the surroundings are by natural convection and radiation. The convection heat transfer coefficients at the inner and outer surfaces are 80 and 10 watts per meter Kelvin respectively. We need to determine the rate of heat transfer to the ice water in the tank as well as the amount of ice at 0 Celsius that is melting in a, temp in a time of 24 hours. In order to solve this problem, we're going to assume that it's a steady state, one-dimensional in the radial direction, and all the properties are constant. In order to solve this problem, we're going to do thermal resistances. Inside of the tank, we have convection resistance, which we're going to call Ri, and that's simply we're going to have our i is simply going to be 1 over h i and the surface area that is internal. The second uh, resistance that we have is R1, which is the conduction resistance taking place on the thickness of the stainless steel tank. So R1 is simply going to be R2 minus R1 divided by 4 pi K R1 times R2. Okay, that is once again the conduction resistance, and this is for an spherical shape. Then we have the resistance to the radiation and the resistance due to the convection on the outside. So we have uh, the radiation resistance is simply going to be 1 over H radiation and the surface area on the outside and then RO is going to be 1 over HO times the surface area on the outside. Okay. So notice that we have to do a little bit of calculations for us to be able to get all these resistances. So the first thing that we're going to do is uh, geometries. So we have area 1. Area 1 for a sphere is simply going to be pi d1 square. We substitute the values, we get 28.3 meters square. Area 2 is going to be pi d2 square. So now d2 is simply the internal diameter that you have plus twice the thickness of the tank. We substitute those values once again and we have 29 meters square. So notice that we have we have all the values so we calculate our i. So we could just calculate it. So let's substitute it and start solving those values. Our i is going to give us simply 0 0.000442 Celsius over watts. So we're able to calculate our i. R1, we have all the geometrical quantities and we could substitute them. R1. It's going to be once again conduction and it's going to give us 0 0.000047 Celsius over watts. Okay. We're going to move into the outside convection since we do not have the radiation value of the coefficient, coefficient for radiation. So we're going to start RO and then we're going to go back to our radiation. R O we substitute all the values that we have and we get simply 0 0.00345 Celsius over watts. Okay, so now we need to, for us to be able to calculate the resistance for radiation, we need to calculate H rad first. So if we go back to what we learned in earlier chapters, we, found, we know that the value of the radiation, the coefficient for radiation is going to be epsilon sigma T at the surface 2 square plus T 2 square T 2 plus T infinity 2. 
okay? The issue for us to substitute here is that we do not know what is the temperature at, of the surface at point two, at the outer surface. We know the temperature of the fluid or the walls, but we do not know the value of the temperature at T2. The only thing that we know is that T2 is somewhere between zero, because this is the internal temperature, and 22, which is the outside temperature. That's all we know. So technically, the way that you solve for this is you do iterations. We start with a value for T2, we do the whole process, and then we'll find T2 again and see how close we were in the original values. So we're going to start with a value or an uh, iteration of T2 at 5 Celsius. As I said, this is a guess, and we could start at any value between 0 and 22. Okay, so we're going to start with T2 at 5 Celsius, and since the surface is black, we're going to use epsilon to be equal to 1. Remember that sigma is equal to 5.6 times uh, 67 times 10 to the negative 8. And this is what m is square k to the 4. Okay? If we substitute these values, we find that h rad for these particular values are going to give us 5.34 watts m is square k. Okay. Now whenever you have these values, then we find the value of our radiation, so the resistance for radiation. We go back and calculate it, and we find it to be 0 0.00646 Celsius over watts. Now that we have the value of all the resistances, we're going to solve this thermal circuit. Okay, so the first thing that we have to do is find the equivalent resistance between the parallel uh, resistances that we have over here, the radiation and the external convection. So we're going to do R equivalent 1 is going to be simply 1 over RO plus 1 over R radiation. We substitute all those values and we find that that equivalent resistance simply becomes 0 0.00225 Celsius over watts. And now we have three new resistances in series, Ri, R1, and the new equivalent. And then we find that the summation of all of those, so the R total, is going to be all the values, as I said, R1, Ri plus R equivalent 1. And that becomes 0 0.00274 Celsius over watts. Now, this is the value that we're going to use in order to solve for the first question, which was what is the total amount of heat transfer across um, the sphere or the tank. So we know that Q dot is equal to T infinity 2 minus T infinity 1. Those are the two values that we know. And the resistance in between them is the one that we just calculated. And if substitute the values, we find that the value of Q dot simply becomes 8,029 watts. Before we go and answer the second part of the problem, we need to go and validate the assumption of 5 Celsius. It's good. In order to do that, we're going to use the same equation related heat transfer um, rate with the delta T and a resistance in between two points. The two points that we're going to choose are it's going to be the outer temperature that we have in the sphere and T infinity outside. Okay, And the resistance that is going to be in between them is going to be the equivalent resistance that we calculated in here. So we find that the Q dot is equal to um, simply T infinity 2 minus T2 divided by the equivalent resistance uh, that we have in between those two points. And if we solve, solve for T2, we find that that temperature is equivalent to 4 Celsius. 
this value of the temperature is close enough to the original guess, which was 5 Celsius. If your result was way off, what you need to do is take that value and substitute it into the initial guess and do as many iterations as needed in order to get a uh, fairly good uh, approximation. Now we're going to do the second part of the problem in which we need to calculate the amount of mass of ice that melts within 24 hours. In order to do that, we're going to uh, do a little bit of thermodynamics. Since we are evaluating the amount of mass that melts, we need to use a phase change. And that amount of heat uh, that is due to a mass change is equal to the mass times the amount of latent heat of vaporization for water. And in this case, for latent heat of vaporization for water, we're going to use the value of 337 kilojoules per kilogram. Now we need to find the value of heat first. The value of heat is simply going to be equal to the amount of heat rate times the total time that is taking place. The amount of heat that we calculated was 8029 watts and we're going to multiply it by 24 hours and we know we are going to do a conversion that in one hour we have 3600 seconds. In order to solve this please remember that watts are equivalent to joules per second. So now hours and hours cancelled and seconds and seconds cancelled and you left with joules. So if we multiply this out, we find that the value of heat is 693,700 kilojoules. Okay, so now we're going to use the equation that we have from thermodynamics to find that the mass is equal to the amount of heat divided by the latent heat of vaporization. So this is going to be equal to 2,000 79 kilograms. A very large amount of ice, but keep in mind this is also a tank that is about 3 meters in diameter and the total time is 24 hours.